Zudio has one of the largest success stories in the Indian market. Over the last many years, when the apparel industry has been shrinking, Zudio has been expanding like crazy. One store being opened every two days. That means in a single month, they opened 15 stores all across the country. They do not run any large advertisement campaigns and they do not sell any product worth more than 999 rupees in any of their stores. So in the first part of the video, let's do a deep dive case study of the brand Zudio and look at what they did right and how they got here and then move on to the analysis of the entire company stock. Yes, the stock is listed under the Tata brand, which is Trend Limited. So after analyzing the Zudio brand, we'll go into the entire company analysis of Trend as well. This is Ajay Ajit. Welcome to the video. Out of the many Tata family members, most do not like to come into the limelight. One such person was Simone Tata. In fact, she is so important to the story that the story actually begins nearly 60 to 70 years ago. So Simone Tata is a stepmother of Sir Ratan Tata and she was a second wife of Naval H. Tata. So after being born and brought up in Switzerland, she came back to India after her marriage in 1953. Eventually, she became the managing director and the chairperson of Lakme Group. Yes, Lakme Group was once owned and operated by the Tata family. In the year 1998, Tata sold their entire stake in the fashion and beauty brand Lakme to Hindustan Unilever Limited. Lakme was a pioneer in selling Western cosmetic brands in India, but the Tatas felt that they could not do more justice to the Lakme brand. So they sold off the entire stake. Now, Ratan Tata had one demand to the Tata board. The entire proceedings from the Lakme sale should be used only for growing another brand in the fashion and apparel industry. And that is how Trent was born. And for leading this new brand, Ratan Tata selected Simone Tata to grow and establish Trend Limited. And in the year 19 in 1998, Westside was launched as a premium apparel brand by the Tata Group, especially Simon Tata, who was very well aware that the Indians' old fashion styles were soon about to change. And today, the brand is being run by Noel Tata, who is Simon Tata's son, and it's at a very different scale. They have 227 Westside stores right now, but more importantly, they have 460 Zudio stores. And after multiple years of slow but steady growth, Zudio has turned out to be their cash cow, making thousands thousands of crores in revenue as we said earlier and opening one store every two days across India. Their promise is very simple and I think that is what attracted the Indian audience into the Zudio stores. When you step into a Zudio store, you will not be finding any product which is more than 999 rupees and that is a promise. This would be done with good quality, with really good designs and with the Tata brand. The company opened their first Zudio store in 2016 in Commercial Street, Bangalore and from there the growth has been really crazy. Even by the year 2000, 2019, they were just at 40 Zudio stores. And as you can see here, this is a crazy story of how Zudio grew from a one store brand in 2016 with a slow growth till 2020 after that breaking out and hitting 460 stores by the end of last year. So Zudio's growth story is what we are here to learn. The first strategy that they deployed was to keep their cost low because if they have to stay true to their mission, which is to offer everything in their store for just under 999 rupees, they have had to keep their cost low as well. To do this, they started off with non-prime locations. All studio stores that you see will not be set in actual uh, tier 1 cities or even in the city centers. Even in Bangalore, if you're looking at the nearly 30 studio stores in the city, they're not all located in the city center. In fact, very few are near the city center. Most of the stores are spread out in a way that the cost of property and thus the rent of the store is very, very low. And the second thing that they did to keep cost low is in-house production. So Tata is already a pioneer in the apparel industry. They have a lot of factories and a lot of expertise in the segment. Trend is a company which manages Westside, Zudio and even Zara in India. So you can think about their scale, right? In-house production for all of these brands gave them the ability to go tough on negotiation and get the raw materials for a very cheap price. And the third move to reduce costs was offline focus. So while majority of brands that you see today are selling online, the statistics tell us that nearly a 25% return rate is what the industry, fashion 
industry is seeing in India. That means if you order four products, you are very likely to return at least one of them. So what do other brands have to do? First, they have to pay for shipping. In India, every customer wants free delivery, right? And the second thing that they have to do is to mark up the price so that they do not go into a loss after the return orders, uh, the reprocessing of the orders, everything goes in. They still should be able to make profits, right? So they add a margin above the regular price to accommodate all of these costs. Zudio sells only offline. So what does that mean? No shipping costs as well as very, very less return orders. And even though Zudio stores do not look cheap, the franchises are made in such a way that the entire setting up costs, including infrastructure, including stock as well, will come only up to 2 to 3 crore rupees per store. This is much, much cheaper than any of their competitors. The second strategy was keeping inventory fresh. As I told earlier, India operations of the global chain Zara is being run by Tata. They were 50-50 partnership in India and it looks like Tata took the best advices from Zara for their fast fashion industry. The Zudio stores are always up to date. There are new trends, new designs being shown off in the store so that customers do not get bored. And the chances of you as a customer wearing the exact same design as your friend, that will be lower. I know it's a problem for Zudio right now, but trust me, it would have been much, much worse. And I think they're getting better at this. And the third strategy is increasing their volumes. So because they're a very low margin product, any product that you find on a Zudio store will be lower than 999 rupees. They have to make sure that they sell crazy numbers. And because the margins are lower, Zudio has to sell a lot more units to ensure that they're profitable. And they're happily doing so right now. And the fourth strategy was a FOCO model, which was franchisee owned and company operated. So because of the Tata brand, what happened was a lot of people were very trusting to set up a franchisee for Zudio. What this meant is most of the Zudio stores are owned by franchisee but they are operated by the company. So they are able to ensure the quality of the products. They are able to ensure the quality of the sales. Everything is being taken care uh, by Zudio, the brand itself. But the risk of the store, uh, paying the rent, paying the salaries of the staff, all this is being done by the franchisee owner. And for this, at the end of every sale, Zudio will be giving a small portion of their revenue to the franchisee owner. The FOCO model has ensured that the company can expand without having much debt in its books. And that is also really good. The cost of setting up a franchisee is also considerably lower, right? Because as I said earlier, just two to three crores is what you need to set up a franchisee. The company will take care of its operations as well. So with that trust and the trust in the Tata name and how amazingly the brand is performing everywhere, a lot of people are willing to take the bet on a Zudio franchise. And the last strategy is also very simple. So Zudio here have used a zero advertisement cost policy, right? It does not mean that they do not have any advertisements at all, but it's a very intelligent advertisement strategy. So you would not be seeing any uh, celebrity endorsements. You would not be seeing their ads on IPL. Uh, you would not be seeing any TV or traditional media ads at all. What you will be seeing are hyper local influencer ad. What this means is you'll be seeing influencers from across the world who have very small number of views but are very rooted to their uh, followers and to the locality that they live in. And once they go and promote a brand like Zudio, mostly for a very, very low cost, a lot of people will show up there because of its affordability and the ease of access because the stores are literally everywhere, right? So a lot of people will go there, shop, and then their customer acquisition cost or their marketing cost will remain very, very low. So this is all you need to know about how Zudio grew from a brand which had just one store in 2016 to where it is at now, 460 stores across the country. Now let's move on to the company analysis part. When looking at Trend Limited as an entire organization, Zudio is not the only revenue contributor inside that. There is Westside, there is Zudio, there is a partnership with Zara which we discussed about earlier and along with it they have the Star Bazaar, the hypermarket franchise model as well. But this is where it gets interesting because the apparel revenue which is Zara, Zudio and Westside they alone contribute nearly 95% of the entire trend's revenue. So in a world where apparel business across the country, uh, over the last many years, they had amazing growth, but right now they're not having a good future. In that scenario, Zudio, Westside and Zara are showing amazing growth. So let us look at what are the strengths of the company, why it is working the way it is. The first one is its strong white labeling ability. All the brands that you see on Zudio and even Westside are Tata owned brands. These are brands 
it's made by the company itself they do not sell let's say an alan soli a peter england these are all other brands right they only sell in house brands thus maximizing their profit potential the second strength is a clear brand differentiation as we talked about earlier there are three tata businesses which engage in the same business which is a apparel business so on the lower side it's a zudio brand on the a slightly more premium side there is west side and on the even more premium side there is zara so everyone who walks into a studio store knows exactly why they are there they know what to expect and the brand dilution there are a lot of people who are fearing about because zudio has come in will that make people feel like a uh, west side is no longer a premium brand uh, that has not happened that was a fear earlier so the clear brand differentiation definitely helped and the third major strength is that fast fashion across the world is rapidly expanding and tata is learning from one of the best which is zara they have been operating zara stores for multiple years now and they know exactly what the zara management is thinking and how they are growing their brand how they have been doing it successfully for the past multiple years so this learning is also a definite strength then comes a fourth point which is a obvious one which is a tata brand and the tata talent if you are looking at the current ceo mr p venkateshalu he has been with the tata company for almost his entire career and he knows what is needed for the company because he has previously worked as its chief financial officer so under his leadership and that of mr noel tata i am sure trend is in really good hand but now let's look into the weaknesses and the possible problems that could come up in the uh, trend limited company after all the crazy rally that the stock has seen the first weakness for trend is it has a lot of loss making subsidiaries inside the company so as i said earlier the major revenue is being contributed by west side zara and zudio but there are other uh, subsidiaries like star bazaar which are continuously making losses for the last many years so if that entity continues to make a loss it might cause a dent in the stock prices the second disadvantage is that in its quarterly earnings the company does not recognize or show us what is the split up between the west side and the zudio revenue i think there are a lot of inside accounting decisions that they are taking which prevents them from doing the same so i would love the brand to be more transparent about this and the third weakness here is a question that a lot of people are asking how far can they grow how long can they keep up this journey of increasing stores and then increasing their revenues but my take here is very simple zudio is not competing with your regular reliance uh, retail reliance trends or something they are competing with the mintras of the world for offering cut throat prices zudio is able to offer the same because of all the advantages we talked about earlier if you are looking just at the case of karnataka you can see the multiple number of cities or towns that they are in right now so yes studio still has space to grow it is mostly going to be in tier 2 and tier 3 cities the concern here would be would they have the same amount of sales that they had earlier per store and that is where we should track this number if you are uh, going to invest in the stock this single number is what you should be focusing throughout your investment journey it is same store sales growth sssg so in a world where the brand is opening stores left and right their revenue is bound to increase but what this single store sales growth tracks is per store on an average how much is the sales increasing and right now it's at a good number it's at nearly 10 percentage which is better than industry estimates it has a slow down from earlier but let's see uh, hopefully zudio can pick it right back up so once you start tracking this number you'll be able to clearly differentiate between what is happening at a macro level which is a uh, number of stores being opened uh, the revenue increasing because of that you'll be able to look at it on a micro level which is in a single store how much their revenues are increasing and that is going to be the very very important factor because this has happened across a lot of franchisee businesses earlier imagine you see a mcdonalds right here and another one uh, another franchisee opened just 1 km apart don't you think there could be a sales cannibalization this could be the same case with zudio as well so talking about if you should be investing in the stock the company's name is trend limited and it is directly competing with other brands such as reliance retail and aditya birla fashion retail limited looking at the current value after all the stock rally it is valued at nearly 1.2 lakh crore the pe ratio of the stock is insane it is trading right now at a 168 times pe ratio but when you are looking at the competitors reliance retail it is having a unlisted market cap it is not a listed company right it is having an unlisted market cap 
of nearly 16 lakh crores with a higher PA ratio than even Trend. Trend Limited has nearly 700 stores across the country but both Reliance Retail and Aditya Birla Fashion have nearly 4000 combined stores across the country. So there is definitely a lot of room to grow. So if you're just looking at that one number which is 700 stores where they are at right now to 4000 where Reliance is set, I think there is definitely a lot of space for Trend to grow. Because of their strong brand positioning, they will continue to take away sales from smaller players like Vmart Limited and even unbranded players and online players as well. But the valuation, it just does not digest with me 168 times the earnings multiple. So what I understand by looking at the last multiple years of the financial statements is that the Q3 number is always really good for the company. So this is a festival season, Diwali and everything is coming in uh, during the Q3, uh, the third quarter of the financial year. So what I understand is the stock uh, always puts out a really good result in Q3 but then dips down back in Q4. So if that is the case, if their earnings do fall in Q4, I think we'll be getting the stock at a better price uh, or if in another case the earnings still continue to increase, then I think the stock might justify its uh, price to earnings ratio then. So yes, I'm definitely interested in the stock. Still I feel it has room to grow. Still I feel it has room to be a multi-bagger. It is not a stock recommendation. It is just based on my personal studies. Do make sure you do your own studies before you invest your hard-earned money into the company. So hope you have learned a lot about how Zudio came to exist as a brand, the entire story of Westside, uh, Trend Limited and even Simone Tata and what are the possible movements and uh, the possible levels that this stock or company can reach up till. Reliance is definitely going to be their biggest competitor. They're coming up with a similar strategy as well of copying what Zudio has done. So even though Zudio is an early mover into this category of uh, affordable clothing, they're still a relatively late mover into the entire apparel market. They have not grown at the same scale entirely. Trent as an entire brand has not grown at the same scale like Reliance has. That means they can take decisions faster and even grow faster from here. They can continue to make decisions which are not weighed down uh, by their previous stores. So let me know what you thought about this video in the comments down below. Leave a like if you liked it and get subscribed if you're already not a subscriber. This is Ajay Ajit signing off. See you all. Bye-bye.